Hello everyone. Thank you for joining. I am Jamal Arif and I am part of the Oracle Cloud infrastructure team. This is a level 200 course uh, regarding Fast Connect service on OCI. Our uh, safe harbor statement. So I'll give you a minute to just read through the safe harbor statement. All right. So um, there are a couple of things for uh, this we need to just specify before we start the course. So there are two rec prerequisites that are mentioned over here. Uh, the connectivity level 100 course and there is a connectivity fast connect level 200 course uh, before in the level 200 course of fast connect you would also uh, we, we go through the different connectivity models uh, and this is built on top of that course so if you haven't taken that course i would advise to take that code first and and then uh, follow this course afterwards in this one we are actually uh, going through the different uh, use cases so you can whether Use, a, use the fast connect connection uh, for public peering or private peering. Uh, we also discussed the fast connect redundancy options, a very important topic when you are designing your infrastructure on OCI and you are using uh, to, and you are designing to have a connectivity options with OCI. And in the last, we will also go through hybrid architectures uh, and provide you different options of inter cloud connectivity using fast connect. All right, so moving forward, Next, we will discuss the uh, couple of scenarios within FastConnect connection. So when you create a FastConnect connection, uh, you can either create a private peering connection or a public peering connection. So what is a private peering connection? So private peering is basically uh, extending your on-premises network to the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure VCN. If, if there is a use case around lift and shift, and if you want to extend your current on-premise uh, on, on data center into the cloud, you can set up a private pairing connection. It uh, allows you to connect to your resources within your virtual cloud network in OCI. Uh, the connect communication across uh, the fast connect dedicated connection is uh, via private IP addresses because you are connecting to your private IPs within the OCI VCN. Uh, normally you will see that if you are either having a hybrid architecture where you are some of your workloads are living inside the OCI and some of your workloads are on premise you will go for a private peering connection uh, also in lift and shift scenarios uh, this is very common as well the other use case is a public peering connection so in case if you want to access uh, some of the public resources within Oracle cloud infrastructure like object storage the object storage service has uh, public endpoints and if you want to connect to them you connect to them over the internet but if, if there is a use case that you want to connect to the public endpoints within OCI using this fast connect connection you can use the public pairing fast connect in case of public pairing you would what you will uh, the communication would be uh, on the public IP addresses using that uh, dedicated connection and you will get to your get to the uh, OCI public resources using over this uh, dedicated connection. Uh, so, for instance, again, the basic example is uh, if you have a fast connect, if you have a, a fast connect public pairing, and you are accessing the object storage, the, the communication would be on the op, on on that uh, dedicated connection. Uh, if you have a public load balancer uh, running inside the OCI. Uh, and if you are using the public peering connection, you would also access that public endpoint of that load balancer using uh, on that private on that uh, dedicated connection of fast connect. All right. So uh, in case of fast connect private uh, peering connection, uh, you can see that uh, whatever model that you are using, whether it's a customer uh, direct to Oracle model or if it's uh, through a partner or an exchange or an exchange uh, provider. Uh, any of the models you can create a private peering connection uh, so in the private peering connection there is a dynamic routing gateway that is involved uh, and you will have a communication between your customer premises equipment so your own on-premise data center with your virtual resources in your virtual cloud network via the dynamic routing gateway and the connection the uh, the traffic would be going to your private resources in your virtual cloud network and the communication across this dedicated fast connect connection would be on private IPv4 addresses. So let's go and discuss some of the concepts or the network design parameters when you are setting up a private peering connection. 
so the routing protocol that we use in private in in case in fact in uh, fast connect connection is a bgp protocol so it's a standard uh, protocol that we use uh, and you'll see that there are some standard parameters around providing the bgp asns when you are setting up the connection all of those are pretty standard uh, when you are when you uh, the uh, for the IP address assignment, uh, you can you you will see that for setting up the BGP connection, you can use a slash thirty or even a slash thirty one IP address uh, because we just need it's just a peer to peer uh, connection between the BGP and you just need to provide the two endpoint IP addresses. In case of BGP ASN, uh, for for Oracle. The BGP ASN is always 31898 uh, regardless of the region in case of a private peering connection. Uh, we only support 2 byte ASN and it can and for private connections it can be any of uh, anything from uh, in the in the provided you know public ASN range. Uh, and you can and we, we actually went through uh, the example in the last uh, course and you can see that you uh, I basically used any of the one of the uh, ASN numbers from this uh, private range uh, when I was doing a, a quick demo of that. We also support, uh, support like uh, LACP for uh, cross connect groups. So when you are creating the cross connect groups within uh, the fast connect virtual circuit, within the uh, when you are creating the fast connect circuit, uh, we support the cross connect groups. Mm -hmm. In a cross connect group, you can have up to eight cross connects uh, and the and the best part is that they actually provide you redundancy when you are connecting into the OCI. So even within a single router, if you have multiple physical links connecting into it, you have the ability to, you have that physical level redundancy on your cross connect. Uh, and by default, you'll see that in case of direct to Oracle, uh, we uh, recommend that the customer also uh, creates an LSCP on their end. In fact, the connection doesn't come up if the LSCP is not set up on the, on the customer side. So you need to set up LACP right from the beginning uh, because we are also going to create the uh, cross connect group even if it's a single cross connect. It just helps that as you are scaling up there is no downtime and you can add additional uh, cross connects to the cross connect group. So we support uh, the BGP authentication mechanisms. Uh, we support the MD5 uh, authentication. Uh, when you have accept when you have set up the authentication uh, all the tcp segments belonging to that bgp exchange would be first verified and accepted only if that authentication is successful um, since the authentication requires additional administration uh, so it can consume router resources uh, so it's like it's recommended uh, only if it's uh, based required by the oci customer uh, and uh, by default with the partners we would not do any md5 authentications on the prefix side, uh, there is a limit of 2000 uh, prefixes that you can advertise over this uh, BGP session. There's no restrictions on the prefix length. We will just advertise whichever prefix that you provide to us on that BGP connection. So let's take a look at uh, the BGP advertisement in case of private peering. So you have a virtual cloud network with a 10 slash 10.1 slash 16 network. It has three uh, subnets uh, in within that CIDR. On the customer side, you have the 192.168 network and then a 172.16 slash 16 network as well. As a first step, uh, the BGP advertises the three subnets that it is connected to, uh, to the CPE provider on the customer side. The customer side equipment then advertises the three subnets that it is connected to. Uh, and as a result, uh, the dynamic routing gateway's routing table gets updated. And right now, the dynamic routing gateway uh, routing table has all the routes in as part of its routing table so it can get to the locally attached directly attached uh, network and it also can get to the uh, private IP addresses in your uh, customer data center uh, and as it has the it has them in its routing table as well all right so moving forward uh, we will talk about the uh, fast connect uh, public peering connection so in case of a public peering connection uh, when you create a public pairing connection, uh, there is no dynamic routing gateway involved because you're not connecting to the uh, private resources in your virtual cloud network. In fact, you are connecting to the public resources within OCI on that uh, dedicated connectivity of Fast Connect. So this is a very key aspect. Uh, and so, for instance, in the figure, you can see that uh, your 
Uh, the red line actually indicates the private peering connection. So it goes to your virtual resources over the dynamic routing gateway. And in case of the public peering, there is no DRG involved. Uh, you can directly access the public endpoints of Oracle Cloud infrastructure in, of that region uh, over that dedicated connection. So when you choose uh, public peering, uh, you provide your uh, organization's uh, public IP prefixes you want to use with the virtual circuit. Uh, each prefix must be slash 31 or can be less specific. Oracle will uh, verify your organization's ownership of each prefix uh, before we send out any traffic on that fast connect connection. And that can take up to like three days business days. You will get the status of the verification in the console or the API. And we will begin the advertising uh, uh, like Oracle Cloud Infrastructure public IP addresses across that connection only after successfully verifying at least one of your public IP prefixes that you have provided. Uh, when you are configuring your uh, edge router, uh, make sure that you give higher preference to your fast connect over your internet service provider uh, because you will receive the Oracle's public IP addresses through the fast connect and also you, through your ISP. So it's important that you configure a higher preference of fast connect over your ISP. In this way, you can actually then receive the benefits of the fast connect public peering dedicated connection as well. Uh, we also prefer uh, like more specific route when we are routing traffic from Oracle Cloud Infrastructure to other uh, destinations. Uh, so this means that even uh, when you have an internet gateway in as part of your virtual cloud network, uh, we will reply to one of your verified public prefixes on the fast connect public virtual circuit. You can also add or remove IP prefix prefixes at any time uh, by editing the virtual circuit. Uh, as we saw in the last session uh, uh, where you have to, when you are creating the public peering, you provide some public IP prefixes. So once even after creation, you can go back, edit those public prefixes at any time. Uh, so on the public pairing side, uh, some of the network design elements. Uh, so for the BGP IP address assignment, uh, in case of public pairing, uh, you will see that when you create the public pairing, we will, OCI will assign the point-to-point uh, -point IPs for the BGP pairing session. Uh, since in this case, it, you're not going through a dynamic routing gateway, there is no DRG routing instance. Uh, instead, there is a, a shared internet routing instance uh, that is used for the public peering connection. Uh, so that, that's why we actually will provide the point-to-point -point IPs and in our, it's normally in the range of 169.254 slash 16. Uh, on the prefix side, when you have created the BGP public peering connection, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure will advertise all the public peering prefixes of that specific region where you are peering with. So we will advertise all the public endpoints of all the public services, and we would also advertise the public prefixes of your uh, virtual cloud network as well. So any of the public endpoints within your VCN uh, and any of the public services of OCI, everything would be advertised on that public peering connection. Customer will uh, provide us with the BGP uh, public IP prefixes that you want to advertise, that they want to advertise on that particular link. Uh, we would first verify that whether those IP prefixes are owned by the customer. And then once they are verified, we'll then start uh, advertising our own uh, endpoint public IP, uh, public IP prefixes as well. The a ASN for OCI would be 31898 and customer needs a public ASN to peer with the OCI. There is a, a prefix limit of 2000 uh, public prefixes in peering in the public peering connection. Uh, and you can uh, uh, again request more than 200 prefix per PGP session, uh, but it's not direct, it's not uh, automatically done. You just have to raise a request uh, for that. All right, so in case of the BGP advertisements with public peering, uh, let's take an example of a particular OCI region. So within this OCI region, for instance, you have the public surface endpoints uh, with, a, with a slash 17. So there is a public endpoint uh, prefix, and then there is uh, another prefix which where all the IP addresses are part of your uh, VCN, virtual cloud network, the public endpoints. Uh, and then on the customer side, your 
public prefix is a 1.1.1.0 slash 24 so you own that public IP prefix in this case what we do is that we share the uh, our public we once the once the once your IP prefix are verified we start sharing uh, all of the uh, public prefixes on OCI site so again it involves the OCI public services and also the customers public VCN IPs uh, and then similarly uh, the customer CP device shares the uh, advertise starts advertising its own IP prefix uh, so our uh, gateway then gets that uh, prefix as well and then from there on moving forward or uh, the communication happening on, on these public IPs is over this uh, public peering connection. To quickly recap uh, and do a quick comparison between the private and uh, public peering connections. So if you're using a fast connect private, uh, the basic use case is that you are trying to get to the VC and private resources. Uh, and in case of fast connect public, you are accessing the OCI public resources on that dedicated connection. Um, again, from a use case perspective, it's mostly when you are trying to uh, get to the public endpoints like the public uh, uh, like the object storage if you use uh, the regular over the internet uh, traffic path that would be that that's not kind of consistent that doesn't give you a consistent latency or consistent bandwidth so if you need a specific uh, bandwidth requirement or a consistent latency for getting to OCI public resources on the, within that region you can use the uh, public service public peering connection of fast connect uh, typical uh, bandwidth is similar in in both case uh, in both cases so you can see the you can start with 1 gig and, or 10 gig and you can have increments of 1 gig or 10 gig as well we use the bcp protocol for both type of connections uh, the in the in case of prefix advertisements uh, for private peering we would only advertise the virtual cloud network private subnets in case of public we, we will advertise the public VCN routes and also the public services routes. Uh, there is no prefix validation required for private because it's all private connection. In case of public, there is a prefix validation that whether the prefixes uh, advertised or provided by the customer are owned by the customer or not. The, there is a 2000 prefix limit on fast connect private and on a public it's a 200 limit. In both cases it's a soft limit so you can increase your resources uh, by uh, going through a request the BGP ASN the autonomous system number is uh, any ASN within private uh, but in case of public you have to choose your public you have to provide your public ASN number so this actually completes our uh, fast connect use scenarios where we went through the private peering connection and the public peering connection now let's talk about the redundancy option in the fast connect service and we'll also go through some of the best practices when you are creating the fast connect redundancy. So the first point is that when you are uh, like when you are uh, having connectivity options within OCI, uh, just understand that what are the redundancy options which are available as part of the service and what additional redundancy uh, redundancy you can create on your connectivity uh, just to make sure that you do not have single points of failure in your design. Uh, in IPsec VPN, uh, we talked about that how you how there are multiple tunnels which are created uh, on the OCI side on each transit pop when you create a single IPsec connection. However, uh, on the customer side, you still uh, can use a single CPE device and connect to both the tunnels on the on uh, on the OCI side. So this gives you a single point of failure on the CPE device on your end. So for high availability and for uh, like for a completely redundant connection with OCI if you're using IPsec VPN it is recommended that you have multiple uh, physical devices on your customer premises uh, equipment side as well so that you can create those redundant connections across uh, the complete overall uh, design so you have multiple uh, redundant connections on the customer side and you have multiple uh, redundant connections on the OCI side automatically as well. Uh, in case of fast connect in the next uh, few slides we'll go through all the different redundancy options which are available within each connectivity model uh, and so you have the different connectivity models how you can create redundant connections when you are using the fast connect services. Uh, for 
in case of network and partners uh, you'll see that if you have uh, if it's financially feasible for you you can have different multiple vendors multiple exchange partners and you can use multiple exchange partners to connect to through to OCI uh, to OCI uh, which gives you addition and redundancy on that end as well you should also plan for uh, your network capacity uh, so that as you uh, grow or uh, scale up your services uh, you can either dynamically uh, scale or add more uh, virtual circuits to your fast connect or you can you have enough capacity in your uh, in your uh, design from the get go so that if you done uh, if you if if there is a more bandwidth uh, requirement required for your applications you have that planned uh, with in your architect in your uh, architecture as well in case of uh, in case of fast connect and ipsec uh, they are they are two different services and and you can also have a service level kind of redundancy when you are connecting into oci so you can have a dedicated private connection using fast connect uh, and that can be your primary connection and you can also have a back backup ipsec vpn connection so in case uh, there is an issue with the fast connect service per se and your fast connect service is unavailable you have a backup uh, ipsec connection that is allowing you to connect in a secure way in an authenticated way encrypted way with the oracle cloud infrastructure and you can use that service so some of the best practices uh, that you can utilize using the connectivity options on oci so within uh, fast connect service there are multiple types of redundancy that are available so you can uh, you have a transit pop redundancy so we all know that from a from a regional design uh, you have two different two uh, at least two transit pops which are then have multiple connections into each availability domain so the first level of redundancy is that you have a transit pop redundancy meaning that you can create a fast connect connection within each transit pop so that gives you a transit pop level redundancy the second level of redundancy is a, a router redundancy within a single transit pop so within tra a single transit pop there are multiple routers physical routers which are uh, present which multiple physical edge routers for oracle so when you are connecting using the fast connect service uh, and you saw that in the direct to core uh, direct to oracle method as well that you can choose when you are creating a cross connect group that whether it's on the same router or if you are choosing a different router for that cross connect group so you can have that router level redundancy on the transit pop as well so if one of the physical router goes down uh, you have another physical connection with another router on the same transit pop that gives you a router level router level redundancy the third is a partner redundancy so you can have uh, multiple you can have fast connect connections with multiple partners so you can use uh, megaport for instance uh, and you can also have another connection using equinex or verizon or any other of the exchange partners that we have uh, and the fourth is the service level redundancy so you can set up a fast connect connection and also have a backup ipsec vpn connection so if a service goes down uh, you have a backup connection through another service uh, to give you a service level redundancy as well uh, so just to quick uh, like again recap uh, the next couple of points so within each region you have two uh, pops so you have two transit pops uh, for location level redundancy and within and each pop has like multiple connections back to the availability domains uh, and within each uh, pop there are at least two physical routers for router level redundancy so let's take a look at redundancy options in in each connectivity model so the first connectivity model we are discussing is the co-location or the co-location via third party network provider model so in this case in this model you are actually directly uh, either co-located basically you are directly connecting to the oracle uh, edge routers uh, and either if you are co-located or you are using a third party network provider so right now you are seeing two different fast connect pop locations so you have a pop location one and you have a pop location two you have a physical connection with uh, the oracle edge routers so you have a oracle edge router in the first pop location and you're also connected to another oracle edge router in the second pop location so this gives you a pop level redundancy so you have if one of the transit pop goes down in one region you still have will have connection connectivity across another pop 
from a virtual circuit perspective you can create a virtual circuit at each transit pop uh, so your BGP connection the uh, one BGP connection would be in the first transit pop and another BGP connection in the second transit pop uh, so you have a redundancy on the transit pop level and if one transit pop goes down you'll have another connection available in the another transit pop the second uh, is a router level redundancy within a single transit pop so for instance you are not co-located in the same uh, in across the two transit pop locations it's not finance uh, financially uh, like uh, good for you uh, and you only are uh, present in one of the phys in one of the fast connect data center locations so in that case you can also go ahead with such kind of uh, redundancy option so each transit pop has two physical routers at least two physical routers at least two edge routers so in this case what you are doing is that if you are co-located in that model uh, in that fast connect data center location you can have cross connect groups for each uh, and connect with each physical router so there's you're connecting with a router one uh, in one uh, in the pop location one and then you are also connected to the router two in pop location one and you have a cross connect group so you have multiple cross connects in this cross connect group now you can then go ahead and create a virtual circuit for each cross connect group so uh, in the in the first uh, section of uh, uh, this level 200 course you remember that when you create a virtual circuit you choose a specific uh, cross connect group uh, where you are creating that virtual circuit so you can choose that my virtual circuit one is on the first cross connect group which is on the first router and the virtual circuit 2 is on the second cross connect group which is on the which is on the router 2 so this gives you a router redundancy within a single transit pop and if one of the physical router goes down in this location you will have still have connectivity with OCI on the second virtual circuit so let's discuss uh, the redundancy options for uh, a layer 2 uh, partner so in case of a layer 2 partner, uh, a given virtual circuit can only run on a single port group known as the cross connect group. Uh, and so when you are creating virtual circuits, you have to, you can create virtual circuit with each individual router to give you that uh, redundancy on a router perspective. And if you have more than uh, one virtual circuits, you can also do either active active or active passive setup uh, with using the BGP attributes uh, like AS path or LP. So for instance, uh, in case of a partner, if the partner is available, uh, has connected to both the transit pop locations and you're looking for a transit pop uh, kind of redundancy, you can create a virtual circuit on top of each uh, individual transit pop. In this way, you'll have a transit pop redundancy uh, with a partner as well. To have a redundant uh, router level redundancy, uh, you can uh, partner has multiple links to each individual router within the single transit population so you can also create multiple virtual circuits within a single pop location uh, to have router level redundancy in case of layer 2 partners so when you create a single virtual circuit it would be on a single physical uh, on the single physical connection like you have a router 1 to router 1 connection uh, and then the second virtual circuit on the second uh, on the second connection so this actually uh, depicts an end-to-end -end, uh, pictorial view of uh, a fast connect connection with the layer 2 partner. So for redundancy, it is recommended that the customer orders two virtual circuits with Oracle and two cross connects to partner so that uh, from a cross connect perspective, you have multiple redundant links with a partner and also you order two virtual circuits with Oracle. This is the responsibility for, for customer end because this is not under Oracle influence. On the Oracle side, we already have agreements with partner that when you order two virtual circuits, the two virtual circuits would be, would be on redundant cross connect groups. So in that case, if, uh, if you have a two, if you order two virtual circuit, the first virtual circuit is going on one, on, on one router and the other circuit is going to the other router, uh, on two, redundant cross connect groups so let's now talk about uh, a layer 3 partner so for a layer 3 partner uh, when you create a given virtual circuit 
it can run on multiple cross connect groups uh, so this gives you a router level redundancy uh, by default so whenever a customer creates a single virtual circuit there are two BGP sessions in the background that are tied to a single virtual circuit and those PGP sessions are, uh, are by default on redundant cross connect groups this is a kind of a agreement between the partner and the Oracle you can always create a second virtual circuit just to uh, like have additional redundancy on the virtual circuit side as well uh, and this is up to you with uh, that because if it's financially uh, feasible for you to do so so in case of a layer 3 partner uh, transit pop redundancy model uh, you if you create a single virtual circuit in the first transit pop uh, it is automatically uh, it has two BGP sessions which are tied to it and the BGP sessions are running across the two uh, cross connect groups so you have you, uh, so you get that router level redundancy automatically uh, and if you want to create a second virtual circuit you can also do so so that you get uh, a transit pop uh, redundancy as well and you also get a router level redundancy within each transit pop For router level redundancy, if you are only uh, connecting to OCI on one fast connect location via a partner, uh, you can create a single virtual circuit and there would be two BGP sessions which are associated with the single virtual circuit which would be across the two uh, cross connect groups. So for end to end picture of a layer 3 partner, uh, you can see that when you order uh, a single virtual circuit, the single virtual circuit is backed up by two BGP sessions uh, and if you order two separate virtual circuits for redundancy you'll have a transit pop redundancy and you'll also have a router level redundancy within each transit pop all right so this actually completes our uh, fast connect redundancy options uh, and let, let's do a quick recap of the comparison between a IPsec VPN connectivity connect uh, option and a fast connect service uh, so typically we see that from a use case perspective the VPN is uh, a very good uh, use case for dev and desk workloads it doesn't take a lot of time to set up a VPN connection uh, you can create a VPN connection quickly and do a, a quick a POC kind of environment for your dev or test workloads uh, if you are moving towards more of an enterprise enterprise class and a production workload uh, then it's best to use the fast connect uh, because it gives you a dedicated private connection which has which has a specific bandwidth has a specific latency that is associated with the connection uh, and you get you can have you can have like multiple different redundancy options associated with the fast connect service as well uh, the supported services so all of the OCS services are supported with uh, with both of the connection options so you can use IPsec VPN you can use fast connect uh, and it's uh, all the services are supported with it uh, typically in case of VPN uh, you'll see like 250 or 200 megabits per second uh, aggregate bandwidth uh, on the fast connect side you can start at a fun gig connection and then you can go uh, like you can increment have increments of 1 gig or you can start at 10 gig and also have increments of 10 gig uh, it just depends upon the connectivity model that you are choosing we use the IPsec protocol in uh, in VPN uh, and we use a static routing uh, within VPN so uh, in case of fast connect you have a BGP uh, routing protocol that is used to uh, advertise or share the IP IP networks uh, from a resiliency perspective you can have active active IPsec VPN connections so we automatically create multiple IPsec tunnels uh, under a single IPsec connection and in case of fast connect you can also create multiple uh, virtual circuits uh, and as we went through a number of different options where you can have uh, different redundancy uh, levels by default uh, i mean ipsec is obviously an encrypted uh, protocol so every all the traffic is encrypted in vpn uh, with fast connect uh, there is no encryption it's a private dedicated connection only for for your traffic so there is no encryption uh, involved but if there are certain use cases where you want to encrypt your uh, traffic even going over the fast connect link uh, 
uh, you can do so either using a virtual firewall uh, instance on both end or you can also uh, use uh, like a public pairing connection and set up an IPsec VPN on top of it. So one of the common deployment architectures where uh, either of the con connectivity options are required is the hybrid architectures where there are certain workloads that are, are in your on-premise data center and then there are certain workloads which are running in the Azure cloud infrastructure. Uh, specifically, if you are in the process of uh, either migrating towards cloud, you don't migrate your workloads at once. It happens in phased approaches. And as you are migrating, uh, you might be creating your web servers or app servers in the, in the cloud and your database is still living on your on-premise. So you need that connectivity back and forth between your cloud infrastructure and your uh, and your uh, on-premise data center as well. So just like we talked earlier in one of the earlier sessions, you have uh, three different ways to establish this connectivity. Uh, the first is just using the public internet and you have your public IPs of your workloads and you access the internet. Uh, that case is uh, not very recommended in a production workload because you're going over the internet so there is no uh, you can say latency or SLA or any of the uh, uh, bandwidth, uh, ded dedicated bandwidth for your workload. You are basically using the best effort uh, method to get to your workload within the cloud. The second is you leveraging the IPsec VPN method. So this IPsec VPN chooses uh, uses an encryption uh, uh, method to uh, uh, have a connectivity from your on-premise to the cloud. Uh, again, it provides you security, but it doesn't provide you uh, the ba bandwidth that you require because it's kind of uh, going over the internet. So we don't. So the Oracle uh, Oracle doesn't own all the different parts of the traffic connectivity. It's to it still uh, goes over the internet and it also goes through the CP on the customer side. So it gives you an encrypted and secure method, but it doesn't give you the bandwidth or the latency. Uh, uh, that you require for your application. The third is the dedicated connection, a private dedicated connection using the Fast Connect service. So the Fast Connect service is best used for uh, production workloads. Uh, you can have, you can create like a one gig or a ten gig connection. You can have increments as you scale up or scale uh, as you scale up, and your bandwidth requirement increases with your application. Uh, you can also have different redundancy options within Fast Connect. And usually we have seen that it's for production workloads. The fast connect is mostly preferred by the customers. So let's take a look at certain examples uh, for uh, hybrid architectures. Uh, so this actually example talks at a high level that if you are going through uh, an application migration from your on-premise to the cloud, you, it mostly happens in a phased approach. Uh, and as you are going through this, uh, this phased approach, you can have your uh, web and app servers within the cloud, and you can keep your database uh, in your on uh, in your on premise because it it takes time and effort to move your database to the cloud. So initially, if you have if your database is still in the on premise data center, you can use uh, either of the connectivity options, a VPN or a fast connect, depending upon your bandwidth requirements, uh, and you can have that connectivity from your uh, workloads, app and web work workloads within the cloud to your database in your on-premise data center. Uh, in another case can be that if you have your uh, application running in both the data center in your on-premise data center and you have your application running in your virtual cloud network within the Oracle cloud infrastructure, then you can load balance between the two uh, traffics, the two, uh, you can say applications uh, by using a DNS load balancing. So the DNS uh, record uh, maps to your domain name that has IP of your public load balancer within the Oracle Cloud infrastructure. So it sends uh, some of the traffic to the uh, to the uh, workloads within within the OCI, and then there are certain workloads and certain tra traffic which is sent to the web servers which are li living in your on-premise. And your database is uh, still the same in your on-premise data center. There are also there are also some uh, use cases where uh, you have both the dev workloads and the production workloads running in the in the cloud and there is some dev traffic and the production traffic but you want to segregate uh, the two traffics 
uh, based upon the link that you that you have. Uh, so since the Fast Connect uses the BGP routing protocol, uh, you can use uh, uh, Fast uh, BGP prefixes like AS Path uh, to have dedicated virtual circuit for the kind of traffic that you want. So for instance, in the current figure, I'm uh, we have a one gig link for our dev traffic and we have a 10 gig link for our prod traffic and there are separate virtual cloud networks within my uh, oracle cloud infrastructure environment and i am sending my and using my one gig link for the one gig uh, virtual circuit for the dev traffic and i'm using the 10 gig virtual circ uh, virtual circuit for my production traffic uh, here I'm showing in a different VCN. It can be the same VCN or it can be a, a separate VCN as well, uh, because from a uh, from a VCN perspective, it it it, it if it can it doesn't uh, it doesn't matter. So uh, intercloud connectivity is another important topic that is uh, that is currently a lot of different enterprise customers are investing their resources in. Uh, reason is that as you as you move towards uh, as as you as a, as you make a move towards the cloud, you will see that you, know, you might end up having workloads in different clouds and not even just uh, in one public cloud. So you might have workloads in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. You might have some workloads which are running in AWS, and you want to have some kind of connectivity between the two uh, public clouds. So in this section, I'll just give you a, an overview that how you can use a fast connect service to have an intercloud connectivity between multiple clouds. The first option is that uh, you are kind, uh, you are lucky and that you are directly connected to both the clouds. So you are co-located in in a fast connect location with uh, with Oracle, for instance, and you are also co-located in a fast connect or a direct connect location with any other cloud provider. In that case, you are uh, manually connected to individual routers you are like physically connected to individual uh, fast connect locations you are responsible for routing because you are directly located within each uh, region uh, there is very reduced latency uh, because you are directly co-located with them and there is minimal incremental cost uh, because of uh, and the implementation big time becomes less as well uh, the other option is that you connect to the other cloud providers uh, using a partner network. So for instance, if you have already uh, relationships with Megaport, uh, Megaport has uh, a, a Megaport cloud router, which can uh, help you connect with multiple clouds. So Megaport has connection with, for instance, AWS, Megaport has a, a fast connect uh, integration with OCI. So you can use a Megaport cloud router to provide that connectivity to you between the two different clouds. Uh, in fact, in the next, uh, uh, we will, I'll actually do a quick uh, demo and a workflow of uh, how do you create a connectivity via Megaport uh, cloud router, which is a layer three connectivity. So in this case, you can see that there is a demo which is also available on this, uh, but you have an Oracle cloud infrastructure uh, region which is in Ashburn region. So you have uh, multiple availability domains, you have workloads in each availability domain, you create a dynamic routing gateway uh, uh, and connect it to the virtual cloud network of your choice within this Ashburn region. Within the AWS side, similarly, you have uh, you are going through the Ohio East region in, in uh, uh, AWS and you have multiple uh, VPC, uh, you have a uh, different VPC subnets within the virtual private cloud on AWS. You create a virtual private gateway on AWS end, which is kind of similar to what a DRG is on the OCI side. And using the Megapore cloud router, uh, the virtual pri private gateway on the AWS side creates a BGP connection with the MCR in Megapore and the MCR then creates a BGP connection with the dynamic routing gateway in OCI. Once the connection is established, then the traffic can be uh, sent between the private workloads in OCI to the private workloads within the VPC of AWS. Uh, I would not go into a lot of details here, uh, but there is a demo that is available uh, uh, that actually walks you through how do you set up uh, this connection. And it also talks uh, into details about what are the different uh, settings uh, or, uh, and what are the different routing table that looks like at each end. So just to give you a quick high, high level overview, uh, you can see that uh, the 
that there are some within the VCN routing table we will just um, point to the uh, to the private private uh, VPC uh, CDI, CIDR so you have a VPC CIDR of 172.31 you just point that that to get to the VPC CIDR that uh, forward the traffic to the dynamic routing gateway the dynamic routing gateway would that advertise after the BGP connection is established it would advertise the directly connected connections uh, and it would receive the uh, ad, uh, routes from uh, the MCR uh, which the AWS routes as well similarly on the AWS side you will see that uh, you have uh, the VPC routing table gets populated with the local directly connected uh, subnets as well and also the subnets which are available on the AWS side so once the routing table gets populated on each end the communication happens on the private IPs between the AWS VPC and the OCI VCN so just to recap uh, we talked about the public and private pairing connections in this session uh, then we talked in detail uh, what are the redundancy options available within fast connect and in the end we uh, take a look took a look at the uh, hybrid architectures using fast connect uh, and what are the connectivity options available when you are trying to connect workloads in in different clouds we also went through a quick workflow of how do you create a connection between an AWS VPC uh, and the OCI VCN using uh, a fast connect uh, private peering provider. Thank you everyone for joining. See you next time.